Hello everybody, Kat here. Thanks for joining me today. I have been gone for, I haven't painted for over a month. I think that's the longest I've ever gone without painting. So today I decided to paint a cow that I saw. Uh, I took a picture of while I was away in Sweden. My, one of my sisters lives in Sweden and um, we got to walk amongst the cows. And as a city girl, I, that is such a treat for me. So I thought I'd paint one today. So I'm choosing a very nice, soft, loosey-goosey brush and I'm going to wet it. And I'm going to wet the background. So I'll leave a picture of the um, the cow, the photo that I took over, over, you know, in the corner somewhere up here or there. When I'm editing, I'll, I'll insert it. So the sky kind of starts right around here in the background um, and the grass kind of ends. So I am looking up at this cow, but while I was trying to draw it, it did take a little bit too much of the, um, the room on the paper anyway. So if I don't get that right perspective, that's okay, I'll forgive myself. <laughs> so right now I'm wetting the background all the way down to almost this fence wire. What I did for the fence wire um, is I used some masking fluid and I have a video about the tool that I used. I don't have it with me at the moment because it's in the kitchen drying off. I washed it right away. Um, but it's this fabulous little tool. So I will link that video in the description and if I can figure out <laughs> how to link it in this video, <laughs> I'll do that too. Um, but it's all about this little tool that you use in it. Look how fine the line is that it makes. It's wonderful. So for the sky, I'm going to start with cerulean blue. And I only have this cerulean blue in this one set, a boxed set that I have. And it's I don't have this color in any other of my of my sets so I think I could probably get away with a different blue but I just thought I'd try to match this beautiful blue sky that's behind this cow and I'm going to after the top here I'm going to start just dabbing in the blue so that it gives the illusion of some clouds in the background and there are clouds of course but they're not exactly in that same spot necessarily and they are really spectacular, but I doubt that I could paint them and give them the justice due. So I'm just going to leave them like that. Just a tiny bit of blue back there. That's a bit hard there. Anything you do now you can probably remove if you're lucky. I'm using 100% cotton paper. So I will try to remove that blue that's right there right, right now with a damp brush. And get just to get that blue off of the cow for now, if I want to include it later, I want to put it there deliberately. I don't want it to be one of those accidents. Now, these clouds do have um, a little bit of color in them. So I'm going to take another soft brush, but a small one. And I'm going to use, this is Quinn Magenta. Just a teeny tiny bit of this color in the clouds here. Maybe a bit more than I'm putting in. Just like that. and try to let some darks be dark and some be light. And as you can see by the way I'm painting, I am not fussing over this. I'm holding my brush at the end, so I'll have less control. So these cute little beautiful cows, I actually got to see them feeding their calves, which as a city gal, like I said, you don't get to see this stuff very often. And it's very unusual most of the time when I do see 
the cows. They're on their own and their babies have been taken from them. So this was a nice, a nice kind of treat. So now to add some color into those clouds, I'm going to put some of the blue into the pink and I'm just going to add a little bit here and there. So it makes like a purpley color and I'm trying to leave it as loose as possible. I'm going to take a paper towel and just dab out a little bit of the, the blue for some extra oomph. The sky is not the star of the show, but it is quite beautiful in this picture. So I do want it to show up a little bit. Now I have some more blue to remove here. Another way you could make clouds is to just drop some water droplets. I'll show you one. I don't want to do too many because I don't particularly want too many more clouds. And you make a cauliflower. So you drop in quite a bit of water and it's going to push the paint away. And when it dries, it usually dries with some hard edges and that's what it looks, it resembles a cauliflower. Now, when you're doing any kind of landscape, the top of your painting and the bottom of your painting will be the darkest in terms of color vibrancy because it's to give you the, the it's to give you the idea that it's closer to you and then what's harder to see is farther away from you. I'm just putting a tiny bit more, a couple of darks so that the clouds are a little more defined because they are a little bit, you know, they're a little weak. I just don't want to too much. So here I let my brush split and I'm just putting some color kind of in between my white spots. So it looks a little bit more natural like the clouds have been have broken up. And if you don't like what you did, you add more water and it should, because your paper's wet, it should soften. There, I think that's a bit better. Okay, I'm going to stop fussing with this guy and I'm going to move on to my cow. Now, my goal is to try not to go too um, detailed because I do have this tendency to, when I want something to stay loose, I struggle with that. So what I'm going to do is use a bigger brush than necessary. And I think that helps to stay loose. I'm going to use some burnt sienna for the body. This is not my favorite burnt sienna, by the way. I, I have a Paul Rubens as my favorite burnt sienna. I'm going to show you the difference. Do you see the difference in that? That's got more brown. So I'm going to use some burnt sienna for the body, but the face is, is kind of a light color. So I'm going to use some Jean Brion, just, just like this. And I'm, it's very watery. I just want to get this color in and it's just the face that's like this. So I'm going to add this color wherever I see it on the, on the body in place of white because it's not really white. I'm going to use this with a teeny tiny bit of this pink, just a little bit. And you see it kind of goes like a really baby pink. So I'm going to let that bleed in and that's for the nose area and it goes down to the mouth. I'm standing up to paint. but I think I'm going to sit soon. And to add a little bit of shading into this cow face. <laughs> She's so sweet, this cow. What color shall I use? I think I'm going to incorporate some, some Payne's gray into, into the face here. 
So there's always a Payne's Gray that you'll like better than others. Some are bluer than others. And I think it's always, it, your painting's a little bit more interesting if you add a bit of color, but it's not necessarily realistic. Because as I often say, if you want realistic, then you should just take a picture. We put so much pressure on ourselves to get realistic when we don't really have to. So here I've established some of the darker and you can see I'm not correcting my, my imperfections. I'm just letting the paint do what it wants to do. And I can go in later with a bit more shadowing. And the longer you stare at your photo, the longer you'll, the, the, you, the more you'll see, the more um, shadowing you'll see. It's, it's tricky at first, but. Okay. And my bristles have kind of split apart on their own, so I'm gonna leave them like that. Okay, I'm going to leave the face alone because I kind of like where that's going and I'll, I'll embellish upon it afterwards. I just want to make sure I got the right angle here and I do. Maybe a teeny bit of brown here. Just a slight bit and I'll go in again later with some more. There's a bit of that color here. So down her belly, she has some white. And so I'm gonna use the Jean Brion for that. If you don't have Jean Brion, use a really pale um, yellow ochre or something. Or you could just use a pale gray if you mix up a nice gray. And for that, there's quite a bit of of shadowing under here, but it's too wet right now, so I'll do that later. So let's do these beautiful ears. So this one is quite close, and I'm going to wet it beyond the ear so that when I put the color in, it bleeds and it'll make it look nice and fluffy. this one too. Now this one's going to have a hard edge because it sits right beside the cow's eyeball. And so that's going to make the eyelid and the ball stand out. So we kind of want that hard edge right there. Now we will go in with darker after. These are the lightest parts of the ear. So I'm just pulling some out. If you want to splay your brush, you put it down on your palette and you squish it round and round and round and it'll be splayed like that. And then you could try to drag out some of that color like that. Okay. Now for the body, the cow's body is quite smooth. So we're just going to not go too near this, this ear to wet it. I'm going to go and use a much larger brush and bring the water down. The most important thing to do is to look for those, those highlights. So this side of the cow has the sun and the other side of the cow 
is in a little bit more it's not a lot of shade but it's a little darker over on this side let me just fix this right there so we're gonna whoops oh my gosh I looked at my picture and I didn't look at my painting not too sure if the face is dry enough for this so I'm trying not to go too close I'm gonna take some raw sienna I'm gonna put that there so this is my favorite and that is Paul Rubin's burnt sienna so it's it's a little bit richer looking I find it's a little darker I have my my paper on an angle and I like this dripping I'm getting okay so now this side it's going to be a little bit lighter back here because the hind the butt kind of goes up high enough that it catches a bit of light and I'm going to use a different brush oops that's got blue on it so I'm going to take some raw sienna here just right underneath there and then I'll gradually go to this one work its way down And if there's anything that you don't like, you take a damp brush, not not a not a wet one, a damp one, and you just pull away the paint that you don't want in the, in that spot. I found it was creeping up a little bit too much, and this is so fun. I love this. So I'm just trying to get it over. What I have here is a very thin line of masking fluid. I just want to get it over that so now here it's quite dark on the cow so I'm using the darker of the burnt sienna see it's a bit more brown and I'm working on very wet paper and here by the cows head it is quite dark on this side animal painting is fun to learn because many 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 of you have pets and it would always be a nice thing to to learn to paint and it's and it's kind of forgiving because if you do something that is quite off, you're not gonna perceive it as an insult like where a human being would perceive it as an insult. If you made their nose too big or their eyes too close together or whatever have you. Whereas if you're painting an animal, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Now you notice down here, I'm kind of letting it go past here because I haven't done the grasses yet and that's going to cover a lot of the legs I'm not going to paint feet now before I stop and allow this to dry completely I'm going to take a small a thin like a brush with a pointy uh, head and I'm just going to take out a little bit of a highlight there actually I wonder yeah I think I'm going to do that right now so I'm going to take the burnt sienna my favorite one and I'm going to add a little bit of indigo or Payne's gray to it my indigo and Payne's gray are almost exactly the same 
So what that does is it turns it brown and it'll make this part of the cow a lot darker. And when you establish um, shadows, what happens is it gives things shape so you can see a little better where how big the belly is and how big the legs are if you establish these shadows. It's quite dark under there. Adding a bit of that dark over here to the rounded part of the cow. We'll let it dry and I'll be right back. I'm going to do the face. So what I'm going to do is, is oops, zoom in. And for this part, I am going to use a smaller pointier brush. Even though I said I wasn't going to do it too, too um, detailed. I'm going back on my word. But the good thing about it is the photo doesn't have a lot of detail. So I'm not going to be able to paint a lot of detail. I'm because I would have to make it up and I don't want to do that. So this eye has like a brown patch over it, but I'm not sure I want to paint it. So to start with, I'm just going to go in with like a homemade black. So, and I'll start with this, this one over here. Just do that eye. Oh, shoot. I won't do that eye. My brush was too wet. There we go. So I'm absorbing some paint. I'm drying off the belly of the brush. And just trying to get some the eyeball in there sweet sad eyes cows have I don't know if they really are sad but they sure look it once you get the eyes in you can start to see it a little better what you're doing you can also use neutral tint which is what I'm going to use here in the nose I'm just going to come down like that and this nostril is more in shadow, so it looks darker. Like it looks bigger. Let them dry for just a few minutes. And I'm just gonna do the outline of the mouth in this dark color as well. So now here I am going to take a brush. So I'm just going to take some Jean Brion and some brown. And I'm just going to make some. They're very, very small. I know you probably, maybe you can't even see them here. But they all kind of start in the center of the cow's head. And I'm trying not to be too regular with them. I'm trying to make them a little irregular. And I'm just coming down here. And this part of the nose, I'm going to re-wet it right there. I'm gonna go in with that beige brownie color, maybe a bit more brown actually.
that. And all around the lips are kind of brown. And down here is kind of brown. And a little bit of brown all around the nose here. opaque looking but I can do it. I can live with that. Okay so I'm going to use some ultramarine blue in my mix here. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to do some of the shadowing here. I think that's the right color I needed. Needed some ultramarine blue in there. That's a magical color. Just a bit of brown here. And don't be afraid to go in with color. Sometimes we, we, we get nervous about doing these things, but don't be afraid. Just go in and do it. What's the worst thing that can happen is you have to do your painting over again. Not such a terrible thing. Softening the, these edges. I'm dragging that brown up into the nose. Make it a bit spotty. Okay, now I'm going to do the ears. I shall start. They're kind of fluffy and the dark, the dark part is right in here. So we're going to put something dark there to start. I'm just going to dab in a bit of dark. It's wet. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's dark. Gonna allow that to bleed out a little bit and then I'm going to go in with my brush that looks like this with some of the burnt sienna and brown While the, this is drying, because I can't go and do anything else on it just yet, I am going to do the grass. So there's a lot of dried up grass. There's some little yellow flowers. Um, so I'm going to try and do a little bit of both, but I think I'm going to use a credit card or an old plastic card, I should say. 
to dig in some, get some nice texture in there. So I'm going to start with my nice soft brush and I'm going to use a bit of yellow ochre, I think. Use some yellow ochre, just like that. And as I get as it gets closer to you, things are going to be more vibrant because the painting is closer to you. And all this grass is going this way. Now I'm going to go in with some sap green. And this is watercolor, so you can do it as loose or as tight as you like. That's what's it's very versatile this this medium. So before this dries, I'm going to use my And this does etch into your paper. So if you don't want to do that, that's okay. But once you do this, what happens is the darker colors kind of seep up into it. And I kind of, I like that. Okay, and I'm going to add some more hooker's green. And I'm going to use a bit of a smaller brush to do that. Kind of in, in here and there. more yellow ochre now with a rigger brush I'm going to use one about that size it's a script liner or a rigger I'm going to use some sap green and I'm going to make some nice thin grasses try to be as irregular as possible and with the hooker screen I'm going to add it right into my burnt sienna so that it looks a little more earthy when I was there all the wheat was in bloom it was just getting ready they were just all the farmers were getting ready to to plow the fields it was just beautiful Beautiful countryside. It, I was in the south of Sweden. And there was tiny little yellow flowers. Well, I'd say after not painting for a month, it's not going too, too badly. <laughs> now, I'm going to start to add in the fine details now. Now, close to the head, it's quite dark. So I'm just wetting this area. And so you can then see right next to the to the head, you can see that the cow is lighter in color right there. And I'm going to do these. Little tiny hair marks here. Just like that, just, just add another it's yet another shade so try to vary the shades that you use and the ears will look nice and fluffy you see the difference between that one and that one i don't i hope you see the difference and to make the ear look like it's set back it has to be darker there and the paper should still be wet so See right there. There it'll set it back from the rest of the face. This side as well. 
I'm going to first add in that third color. That third shade, it's the same color, it's just a different shade. It's got, um, it's more concentrated, I should say. It's a, it's a different value. And right here, you're going to have to really darken it because it's set back from the face. Like that. And the cow's head is actually forming a shadow onto its own ear. And the same with here. It's going to be much darker, I think, here. Right here. So I'm using the Burnt Sienna and the, you can use the ultramarine blue or indigo. Sometimes the ultramarine blue causes separation though. That's why I'm going to use the indigo. That's what I did before. So, so try to do this and still leave a little bit of lighter areas because different parts of the cow are different shapes and so therefore the light will catch a little differently on them. It's looking pretty good and now we have to add a little bit of oomph to this side. It's in the light but it still has shape and shadows and darkness and you know it's not one big flat cow so the leg and going in the same direction as the bulges and the it really helps to add definition Just softening these lines right there. So this face, I still need to put a bit more shadows there. So I think I'm going to use some blue to do that. It sets it back farther. Now I'm starting to like it. See, this is what happens with your paintings when you first start hard to like it sometimes. So this is the head casting a shadow. It's still quite a bit darker in here. I'll try and I just don't want to overdo it. There we go. And under the belly here. It's darker. And then a bit of indigo right on the very edges so it bleeds out. I don't like this so I'm going to soften this all out. When you're using uh, cotton paper you can kind of do that so that's what I'm going to do. I don't like it. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of extra dark in where the eyes go. I 
I'm going to take my waterproof white and with a small brush I just need to emphasize this area a little bit more so I'm just putting some and if you don't use waterproof white what's going to happen is it's going to end up being too too white There's not a lot of places to use this on. And I really don't like these nostrils, so I have to fix them before we go. At least before I take a photo. I'm going in with um, the burnt sienna. I think that was my mistake. I went in too dark. There we go. I think I'm liking it. There's so there's such a long period where while you're painting, at least for me, I don't like what I'm painting. I'm just adding in those final darks right around these areas here. There we go. And very lastly, although my white didn't cover my boo boo, I made a boo boo there before. I don't know if you saw me do it. Sometimes while I'm looking at my at my photo reference, my reference photo, <laughs> my photo reference, I um, I look away and I still paint, and then I I paint on an area I shouldn't paint on. I still think this side of the face could be darker, but you know, maybe a little bit more blue around here. ultramarine blue oops oh, did you see what I just did oh my goodness actually it doesn't look too bad <laughs> got lucky there and just a tiny tiny little bit of wateriness here very very watery you know just so that you could see the little hairs that are growing down it's not to do every one of them it's just to to, to get a direction going so you can see what direction that the these cute little hairs are growing in I think that I'm gonna leave it like that whoops just lightly lightly dabbing it and then for the very final thing what I like to do on my lightest parts it, depending what colors I've been using I'm gonna use a raw sienna which looks like this and I'm just going to put them where the lightest parts of this cow are and it kind of lets you know that the so that's where the light is really catching. It's 
very subtle, just tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. And I am going to call this a Swedish cow. Okay, so before I thought I was finished and I forgot to do this and I already took off the masking fluid, the, the wires that go across the gate here. So let's see if I can just go over it without making it look too, too bad. Just at the edges, I just want to put a, it's like a greenish gray color. So I'm going to use some neutral, neutral tint neutral tint and this green here. I'm just going to try and come up with some icky green color, gray color. There we go. Just putting in a little bit of the brown. Actually, I'm going to put in some burnt sienna. When you've already used colors, it's a good idea to use them again. And um, just here on the round to make it look round because the light's coming from the right, uh, the left side. So we're going to make this darker. As I so often do when I finish a painting or I think I'm finished, I go back to it. I leave it sitting and then I, I you know, do my thing. I go back to it and I the head was bugging me because it didn't stand out as much. Uh, there was too many clouds. There were too many clouds behind. So I added a tiny bit of blue. Um, the first time I added it, I really liked it. The second time I added a bit more and now I'm not yet yeah, anyway. And I added a little bit more here. So that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't be shy to leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Happy watercoloring. Bye bye.